All right, so I'm going to be getting some uh, things out of my system as I deal with that whole psychological withdrawal thing, things that need to be said, that uh, obviously the, the impulse would be to boop, 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 type that shit out, right? So keep in mind who is saying this, not this guy, but this brain. Best I'm able to deduce, most of the people that have me had, see, getting used to it, most of the people that had me as a friend on Facebook did not follow my posts. People I know. They maybe wanted to be connected so that they could, you know, still communicate or whatever. Not that very many people did. And uh, I've been able to, through various uh, what you could call almost bait posts, confirm that some people were, in fact, seeing what I was saying. And it's not even like inflammatory stuff. I, I did not tend to post inflammatory things. Now, some people might get upset or triggered by certain elements of truth that they're not prepared to accept or whatever. But, you know, it's... Uh, and, and granted, from time to time, definitely lose my cool and, uh, and have something to say about the kind of people that treat someone that way. But the thing is, if you want to go digging into um, psychology, the effect of ignoring someone has been found through clinical studies to stimulate the exact same brain chemicals in a person as if you had hit them. So all these people that say they're my friend in some function or format. Anything from a guy that I was in a band with talking about how he had one time clicked on Facebook and seen like seven of my posts in a row because apparently that day I was on a roll. And he put me on a break that lasted for almost three years. Just not getting my posts at all. Now, personally, myself, I have literally never done that with anyone. There are... <laughs> Jesus Christ, cats. I have personally never put anyone on a break. The, what was it, since 2011 that I got on there? Ten years. Never once. Never once did I go, I just can't deal with what they're saying. I can't see it. Now, that's not to say I didn't, didn't block people, because I have definitely blocked people, but it had more to do with, uh, like, the, oh, let's see, the girl I went to high school with that helped my estranged wife attempt to gaslight me the week that the estranged left. Um, very abusive person, very toxic, and uh, people like that need to be blocked. Uh, some of my former friends who, you know, basically chose ideology over someone they know, um, would rather listen to mainstream news narratives than one of the most intelligent people that they'd ever met in person telling them with certainty based on evidence presented that things were not true as they thought. So a lot of people became abusive about four years ago. And, you know, I don't have to put up with that. But as far as people that I connect with saying something that I just didn't want to respond to myself. Yeah, I just keep scrolling. But oftentimes, I still pop in, leave a comment, whatever. Lots of reactions. I have likes and sometimes shares all over the place with stuff. But other than a couple of people who would consistently do that, who I would say I could count as friends, um, people that... You know, they don't, they don't judge. They don't, you know, it's just folks I've known over the years that, that, you know, have some sort of a connection with. But we're talking like 3% of the total number of people in my actual circle treating me like a person. Okay, I'll say 5%. But all the people that I know for a fact would see the things that I would say... Maybe they'd read it, maybe they'd scroll past, but you never get any interaction. And of course, you know, back in the day on Zanga, it was a lot easier to, to track when people were seeing. 
so I could say something of vital importance, some piece of truth that people need to know, and I could see the amount of interaction that it got. And then I could make a post saying, now I know that at least X number of you saw this. It would be really nice if anyone acknowledged the fact, agree, disagree, whatever. And it's not an attention thing. It really isn't. It is not seeking attention. It is seeking validation. And when people that you thought were your friends refuse to provide you with validation, they're not your friends. So, a ton of people, a ton of people would treat me in a way that my brain reads as they might as well have just punched me in the nose. Now, you know, not responding is one thing, but ignoring is another. And if you've ever had a chance to read anything that I've ever had to say about the concept of Buddhist enlightenment, of the Buddha's uh, Four Noble Truths, that suffering is a thing in the world, suffering has a beginning and an end, that the end of suffering involves the uh, end of, uh, of what gets translated into attachment or desire these days. I found that attachment or desire is not actually the root cause of suffering. Because attachment and desire have their own root cause. If something has a root cause... It is not itself a root cause. Now that said, um, it might be argued that ignorance also has a root cause. But I would say that overwhelmingly ignorance is much more the root cause of suffering in the world than desire or attachment. Because ignorance is what leads to desire. And it's, some forms of attachment are perfectly natural. We're talking psychological excuse me, attachment. Now here's the funny thing though. An ignorant person who, in their ignorance, does something that severs or fails to secure attachment to begin with. Now, look at parenting, right? You get folks that are self-obsessed or too busy with other things, so therefore they don't validate or pay attention to their kids. Those kids grow up with attachment disorders, and those kind of attachment disorders often lead to sociopathy, narcissism, um, pathological lying, all kinds of things. Uh, very, uh, there, there's actually a specific branch called reactive attachment disorders, and these are the real, you know, super antisocial and prone to lashing out, physically lashing out. And that tends to be rooted in uh, a bad attachment at a young age, uh, much like a lot of mental illnesses. Uh, you know, there are things that are literally something is awry in your brain. There's a chemical imbalance, or there is a functionality that is different. Then, besides that, there are also a number of what they call pathologies, and pathology is simply that there is a, a logical course of cause and effect that stems from something previous, and many, many, many things become affected as that branches out over the course of your life. And of course, the longer you go without dealing, it's like if you, if you suffer a loss and you fail to cope, failure to adequately cope with uh, a loss or trauma is its own pathology and it will have consequences in the future if you do not address the things you need to address. Now, I know a lot of people are terrified of looking inside of themselves, but what I'm getting at is even as an adult, you can gain pathologies, obviously. Um, you can acquire post-traumatic stress disorder or complex post-traumatic stress disorder from any number of, of traumatic experiences in your adult life, and most specifically if you are unable or unwilling to cope. And sometimes it doesn't even matter. Sometimes the trauma is simply such that uh, the, the damage has been done. The dent cannot be perfectly smoothed out again. And, you know, that, that seems to be the case a lot of the time. Uh, but the only way out is through. You have to deal with the things and move on. That's what I've tried to do uh, in a lot of things. You know, loss of my parents, end of my marriage. <clears throat> Everything that's going on in the world is pretty damn traumatic. 
And I mean, that ties into other things too. Trauma-based mind control works for a reason. But, um, yeah, you know, life is trauma a lot of the time. Existence tends to be suffering. And if you want to cease that suffering, uh, you know, it's, in a sense, you have to, you have to cease attachment to the world more than you have to cease ignorance, I suppose, because if you cease ignorance, it doesn't necessarily change the world. And the way things are right now, by becoming less ignorant, you simply become more hated. Or at least more ignored. So, don't forget, remember that. Every single time that you view content by someone that you know, but you don't give any sign or hint that you've interacted with it, that you have heard what they had to say, even if you disagree. To simply not let on is equivalent to physically harming someone. The person that is subject to this, their mind and their body react in exactly the same way as if you had struck them. 